Guy McPherson here of GuyMcPherson.com, otherwise known as Nature Bats Last. I would encourage you to go to the December 9th, 2020 post at GuyMcPherson.com. That will provide the access to the two papers I'm going to discuss and also will show figure three, which is an important part in understanding what I'm presenting. Okay, I have two peer-reviewed articles both about abrupt climate change. And I'm gonna mention just a little bit about each of them. I'll start with the outcome of abrupt climate change in a paper from the Open Access Journal Scientific Reports published December 3rd, 2020, and called Marine Protected Areas Do Not Prevent Marine Heat Wave Induced Fish Community Structure Changes in a Temperate Transition Zone. Now what that means is shown in the figure three that I provide at Nature Bats Last. What it means is, is that there's no significant difference in the community structure of the fish population in this marine system, the ocean, in other words, in response to a heat wave. So, in other words, the marine protection area did not protect the heat wave changed the community structure the same. There was no significant difference in the change in community structure between the protected area and the unprotected area. So if you are interested in a global approach to protection of marine systems, you have to keep in mind that it's a global phenomenon that's going on right now. And just protecting a relatively small area, even if it seems relatively large to us humans, that will not protect the area because what we are doing at the planetary scale has impacts at the planetary scale, not just at the local or regional scale. Second paper is from Nature Geoscience. You can see the abstract only for most people. And it was published December 7th, 2020, so just a couple of days ago. It's called Biogenic Particles Formed in the Himalaya as an Important Source of Free Tropospheric Aerosols. And it points out in the abstract, poor knowledge of the pre-industrial aerosol concentration and composition in particular, particles formed directly in the atmosphere from gaseous precursors constitutes a large uncertainty. It certainly does. There is considerable uncertainty about the aerosol masking effect. In general, the nature and size of the particles and what altitudes they, quote, settle at for the relatively short time they are in the atmosphere. This paper indicates that the whole Himalayan region may act as an aerosol factory and contribute substantially to the free tropospheric aerosol population. This is reading straight from the abstract. The process is therefore likely to be essentially unchanged since the pre-industrial period and may have been one of the major sources that contributes to the upper tropospheric aerosol population during that time and also today. So this is very interesting. It points out the uncertainty associated with the aerosol masking effect and points out that at least one source from the Himalayas might have been contributing even before the Industrial Revolution began, even before 1750, might have been contributing aerosols in the atmosphere that block incoming sunlight. So that's a really interesting paper and points out the uncertainties. The other paper from Scientific Reports, which again is an open access journal, indicates the bad news, one of the bad outcomes if you're interested in protecting life on Earth from abrupt climate change, specifically in marine systems. So that's it uncertain news from the Himalayas and certain and certainly bad news if you're interested in life on earth in marine systems. Thank you for paying attention and we'll come up with another one of these in about a week.